Hey, what's up, guys? It's Kirti Lari back again with another video. And WhatsApp just turned on end-to-end -end encryption for a billion users. That's right, end-to-end -end encryption for a billion users. But what does it actually mean? What does it? What is it supposed to do? What is its main goal? And does it have any loopholes? And why did WhatsApp decided to turn on encryption just now? and not earlier and this video will helpfully answer all of your questions regarding whatsapp's end-to-end -end encryption so this is whatsapp end-to-end -end encryption analyzed so let's begin with what is end-to-end -end encryption well basically data exchange between two users over a secure service is completely hidden in the form of a random text and hidden from your internet service provider and the company's whose platform you are using. Break it down in simple terms. Let's take a case when you send a package to your friends or a relative and you expect the company who is delivering the package to maintain privacy and not see what's inside the package. That's almost like how end-to-end -end encryption works. Now, here's where it gets unrealistic. If you put a lock in on the package and share the key with your friend, only you and your friend will be able to open the package and no, no one else. Now here's how end-to-end -end encryption works. Both the phones of the same conversation will have two types of keys, a public key and a private key. A public key is the one which is exchanged between the two devices, but the private key is never shared with other devices. The public key is exchanged between them for verification purposes, and these public keys and the private key form something called a shared key and messages are encrypted, sent, and de decrypted using this shared key. I'll leave a link to a good video which explains end-to-end -end encryption in even more detail. Now coming to whether it's reliable or not, yes, it's pretty much reliable and and as of now there hasn't been any discovery of any sort of a loophole like a backdoor for the government and I don't believe that there is a backdoor for WhatsApp since they don't advertise on their product and also having a backdoor would essentially kill the purpose of having end-to-end -end encryption. Now coming to the device compatibility, this thing is supported by all devices which exist right now and have the ability to run WhatsApp including the old QWERTY Nokia phones and even the flip phones if it can run WhatsApp. But to ensure that you have end-to-end -end encryption, you just need to download the latest version of WhatsApp from your app store, play store or even whatsapp's uh, the website whatever and when you see this yellow box which says messages of this conversation are end to end encrypted that's when you know you uh, your conversation is encrypted but end to end encryption only works when both the sender and the recipient of the message are having the latest version of whatsapp not the latest version the version which supports end to end encryption now the reason why it doesn't work with older versions is because the older versions don't have the specific code to create public keys and the shared key to allow this whole thing to happen. And now to the final question, why end-to-end -end encryption and why right now? Well simply because end-to-end -end encryption is the best and the most advanced form of handling user data. And also it's turned on now because uh, a couple of years ago when WhatsApp was just a small company not owned by Facebook, it wasn't technically uh, possible for them. But now they have a big support from uh, Facebook and also they have partnered with a cryptographer and also a Windows Phone uh, programmer to make also one of the possible reasons for turning on encryption at this point of time, 2016, is that the government might ask WhatsApp for user data when it comes to national security. Now, they would they are li they would be liable to hand over user data to the government or governments if they hadn't enabled end-to-end -end encryption. But since now they have en enabled end-to-end -end encryption, even if the governments ask WhatsApp to hand over user data, they can't because they can't. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to know about end-to-end -end encryption and what how does it affect you and all other users who use WhatsApp and I think WhatsApp is only one of the few uh, messaging apps which actually use end-to-end -end encryption Viber is one, BBM is one, Apple's iMessage is also one and 
uh, none of the social network is using end to end encryption right now not even facebook not even snapchat not even instagram so technically speaking whatsapp is the most popular messaging app and also the most secure messaging app thanks for watching this one i'll catch you guys in the next one cheers Talk nicely to them. <laughs>